Hello everybody, it's Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, and of course one of the founding partners here of the Dividend Kings. Earlier in this week, I got an email from a Dividend Kings subscriber, actually a private message on Seeking Alpha, that asked me if I would give them some thoughts, you know, my own thoughts on Eaton Vance, which was being acquired by Morgan Stanley. A little did the subscriber know that I actually was also long Eaton Vance, so I was already going through that process. But anyway, um, I did send him a short response that I put in the written portion of the article. But on top of that, I began doing my own due diligence and thought it would be a great offering for the Fast Graph Friday this week. Um, analyze out loud video and article that I produce every Friday for you. There are a lot of reasons I'm doing this. Number one is I think there's some very interesting stories to be told here. So let me go ahead and get into the actual video here. Let me start out by just talking about Eaton Vance a little bit. I'm going to take the price off of the graph and I want you to look at the company's long-term history. There's a little bit of cyclicality here. You know, the company did have a couple of down years of earnings back in 02 and 03. They had a pretty good year, really, but a down year during the Great Recession. And then I do want you to focus on these two years here where we had two down years, because there's something real important here that I do want to let you know. And I talked about in the written portion of the article what a roller coaster ride this has been. Well, I purchased this company in October of 2015. My average cost is about $36. So this is pretty close to what my actual average cost is. And I, in the article, I pointed out what a roller coaster this was. Now, you know, at first I pointed out that the stock initially then dropped, you know, fell almost 20%, 19.9% right after I owned it. And then from that point, we had this two or three year run here where the stock, you know, almost doubled and just under doubled in value. And I was averaging over 45% a year. And then of course, from there, you know, we had this reversion to the mean, if you will, and the stock actually became very undervalued. And it fell 39% during that period of time. And then of course, we had another rally and then the stock price dropped. And now we've got the buyout and the stock is trading here above what I would call the orange earnings justified valuation line. In other words, this is one valuation reference that I like. The earnings yield is now down to 5.44%. I prefer six and a half or seven. But anyway, make a long story short, this has been a long roller coaster ride. But I do want to make a point here. I bought this company not because I was looking for big capital gains. I invested in this company because I was actually looking for, let me go ahead and mark this again. I was looking for dividend yield. At the time I bought it, I got about a 2.8% dividend yield. And I do want you to focus on the white line here, which is their dividend record. You can see that their dividend has increased nicely. If I go to the long-term performance graph here, you can see that they've increased their dividend every year during this time frame at an average rate of, we'll call it 15% a year. In other words, the company's increased their dividend. Now, if I look at it from the perspective of since I've owned it, Let's go ahead and go back to that and look at it for the period of time I owned it. I bought it with a dividend yield approaching 3%. It was about 2.8, 2.9% when I invested in it. Since I've owned it, as you can see, my earnings yield has grown. I, this yield on cost is what most of you call this. I call it earnings growth yield. The dividend yield increased from 2.8% to 3.9%, and currently I'm over 4%. So it was working perfectly as the dividend growth stock that I wanted, and I was less concerned about the capital appreciation. But again, it was a real roller coaster to ride. The price has been very volatile. Now, I think there's a couple of things about that that I think are worth discussing. And number one is that, you know, when you're looking at a situation like this, you have an awful lot of ups and downs. In the article, I pointed out my favorite cliche that I believe I invented. It says great investors and great mountain climbers recognize that in order to get to the highest peak, you got to occasionally walk through the valleys that come in between. If you're a long-term shareholder type oriented investor as I am, and you're investing for the dividend income, my focus here was on the white line. As long as the earnings continued to grow with the business, I was quite content to hold this company. But I want to show you something else that's important as a buy and hold investor. I read a lot of discussion about analyst estimates. You know, one thing we did when we developed fast graphs is we created an analyst scorecard. And I want you to notice when I was investing in Eaton Vance, analysts were forecasting a 2015 earnings of about $2.60. The company actually came in at $2.29. So if we look at that, this $2.29 was obviously less. So it looks like I bought the stock slightly above the orange line when in reality, I actually did. It looked fairly valued at the time, not 
significantly undervalued, but just fairly valued. So it was a good buy. I had a nice 3% yield and I had a very high growth, you know, history of the dividend. So I was very happy with that. And, you know, nevertheless, from the time I've owned it till yesterday's close, I've averaged over 13 you know, actually 13.6% to be precise on this stock. But again, it's been this tremendous roller coaster ride. But when I look at this company from a standpoint of just the growth in the dividend, you know, I'm very, very happy. I was very, very happy to own the company. This is the kind of company I want to own. It was A minus rated. When I went into the company's financial statement, what I'm really focusing on here, what I should be clear, I'm looking at dividend coverage here. Okay, so one of the things I like to look at was cash. And this company had a lot of cash, you know, on their balance sheet. And I'm going to go into cash flows here in a moment. And then when I look at dividends, you know, they had more than ample cash to pay their dividends. So that was something that I was very, very attracted to as a dividend growth investment when I first analyzed Eaton Vance. And I thought that was the company met the criteria that I was actually looking at as a dividend growth investor. But then, you know, from a standpoint, again, not worrying about price here, I'm going to leave it off the graph. Then I like to look at a dividend growth stock based on cash flows. And what I'm really looking for here is dividend coverage. Does the company have the operating cash flows to cover the dividend? Well, there was a couple of years when they had some weak cash flows where the operating cash flows barely covered the dividend. This just simply means there's no estimates on this company from our data provider fact set on, on operating cash flow. So, but, you know, from a historical point of view, the company's covered their dividend quite well with operating cash flow. And then, of course, the asset test is free cash cash flow, which, by the way, is a very, very close cousin. In fact, in, in many, many cases, identical to Warren Buffett's owner's earnings, which is the cash, you know, that's available to the owners. And they've actually have a better record of covering the dividend with free cash flow. So and let's, let's just go ahead and look at owner's earnings just for the heck of it, because you'll see that the owner's earnings and the cash flow operating cash flow are very, very close. You know, they look very, very similar. They're not identical. There are some changes, some differences have to do with CapEx, but they're very, very close. So anyway, long story short, you know, I invested in this company for the dividend. I was very happy to hold it. I was a roller coaster ride as far as the price, but you know, I was never too worried about that because I kept getting nice dividend increases. Now from there, let's go ahead and leave Eaton Vance for now because the stock is obviously very fully valued right now, if not overvalued based on the buyout price. And of course, that really doesn't matter very much because I do believe the buyout is going to go through. It looks like a pretty, you know, strong, high certainty to me. Let's analyze Morgan Stanley. Now here's the problem. Okay, Morgan Stanley does look attractively valued. Okay, they obviously were a financial that were participating in some of the financial excesses that, you know, actually generated the Great Recession. As you can see, the stock did horribly. They slashed their dividend, their earnings went negative. But then since coming out of the recession, if I drop this, you know, to a year or two after the Great Recession here, the company's, you know, back on a growth trail. Their earnings growth has actually been averaging about 14% going back to 2013 and so on. I can go, maybe even go back a couple of more years and look at it. So, you know, after the coming out of the recession, they've had pretty good results. And their stock looks very undervalued right now. Because it's undervalued, they've got almost a 2.7% dividend yield. It's triple B plus rated has about the same type of debt that Eaton Vance had. But the question is, when I look at this company from a long-term perspective, this is not the kind of company I'm generally attracted to. It certainly doesn't have the dividend record Eaton Vance did as far as consistency. It's much, much more cyclical, but that's not what bothers me the most. Let's look at it from a standpoint like we did with Eaton Vance. Let's look at operating cash flows. This is what really troubles me. This is not the kind of company that I would normally be attracted to. Their cash flows are all over the place. Their operating cash flows often never covered the dividend, which is also, you know, kind of obviously helps explain why they actually have a record of cutting their dividend. If I look at their performance, you can see they've had several dividend cuts over the years, most of them related to the Great Recession, obviously. But the point is, sometimes the dividend cuts were severe, and then they even went through a three-year, four-year period, actually, where they, they kept their dividend flat. So, you know, it doesn't have the consistent historical dividend record that I like, and it doesn't have more importantly, the cash flow record that I believe gives me confidence that the dividend, you know, will continue to grow and be safe. Their, their reporting earnings, you know, have been pretty good here in recent years, as I said. But, you know, when I compare reported earnings, even since the Great Recession to cash flows, I get a much, you know, less comforting feeling. So bottom line is I'm not real attracted to a company like Morgan Stanley. So at this point, you know, the decision is, what do I do? Well, I might ride this one out for a while. I think we're running into some 
you know, a lot of risk in the marketplace coming up. We've, got, of course, got political risk. I don't care what your political posture is. You know, there, there's always risk when you're coming into an election year with the market in the short run. So, you know, I'm really contemplating what I'm going to do. Odds are pretty high, and I may make that decision even before the election, that I just may go ahead and take the money and run. You know, right now, if I sold Eaton Vance on the open market, I would get pretty much what I would get from the buyout. The buyout is $56 a share plus over $4 in dividends upon closing. So it comes out pretty close to the current price. And if I get a quote on it today, and I'll go ahead and go into Seeking Alpha here, you know, it's up just a smidgen today. So I could sell the stock. It's probably what I'm inclined to do, but I'm going to give it a little more time. I want to look a little more into Morgan Stanley. I don't like their long-term record. I like their recent record a little better. I like the valuation, but here's the critical point. I also see a lot of other good opportunities out there. So the question is, would I rather invest in Morgan Stanley or would I rather take the money that the buyout's going to give us and go ahead and find something that maybe fits my own personal investment criteria. That's a decision all of us have to make on their own. It really comes down to your personal preference. I don't think you go wrong with Morgan Stanley today, but it's just not the kind of company I'm personally interested in. So I, I may end up passing, but I'm still doing some work here. I still want to get a little more comfortable with whether or not that's the right decision. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. If you like what you see here, you know, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I also appreciate all of you as being Dividend King subscribers and look forward to talking to you again next week.